Hi, it's me JD and welcome back to my channel. I've come a long way in my die cutting skills over the past few years. Guys, I got my fancy new electronic die cutting machine, whoop whoop, and I already messed it up. I'm gonna press that down and make sure um, all the flowers are nice and stuck on there. And then once I fold the card, I realize I did not think this all the way through. And then I'll just run it like this through my die cutting machine. Excuse me. Why is it so hard? Oh my god. It's stuck. I broke it. <laughs> oh my god. What? I, I, it's stuck. Okay, go the other way. Ah. <sighs> Anywho. And along the way, I picked up some techniques, some tips, and some hacks that I thought I would share with you guys today. As always, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. After you run your metal die and your cardstock through your die cutting machine, your first instinct is to poke out all of those little pieces and get them in the trash as soon as possible. However, if you've got interesting shapes or perhaps you're using some specialty paper, you might want to hang on to those bits and make a shaker card out of them. You'll save on supplies and you'll help the environment out a little. Did you know the dot above the lowercase i and j is called a tittle? In paper crafts, you definitely see them a lot in word dies. And if you're anything like me, then you lose them from time to time. My special trick to help prevent losing them is when I stick the metal die onto my cutting plate, I put a piece of painter's tape or whatever tape I'm using over the tittle especially. That way the tape will hold the tittle in, <laughs> in the die when I run it through the die cutting machine. Now watch, I'll pull out the cardstock and the piece of cardstock for the tittle will still remain within the metal die. Now this will only work with word dies that have the poke through hole on the back of the tittle. Any quality manufactured die would have this. From there, you just simply poke it out and keep it in a safe spot until you're ready to use it. But of course, somehow in the process, I always end up losing the tittle anyway. And so if that does happen to you, just make yourself a new one. Now let's say you've got a brand new die and you can't wait to use it. Well, first you generally have to disconnect the die to another die if it's, you know, a multi-pack. I prefer using wire cutters uh, just because bending them never works for me and I feel like I'm gonna warp the die if I bend it. And so after cutting or detaching each die from each other, you always want to cut off the excess, those little pokey things, cause they'll get you too. I mean, raise your hand if you learned that one the hard way. To do this, I like to lay down a Swiffer cloth to help catch all those little pieces that I cut. For some no mess shine for your die cuts, did you know that you can simply cut it out of some acetate and lay it over top of your die cut? This die cutting hack is for all the impatient people that don't like to wait for things to dry. Now I know what you're thinking, you're like, girl, that's great, but how am I going to adhere this together? Well, this next hack is for easy adhering. So what I like to do is to use a Xyron sticker maker and I stick the acrylic die cut within the maker and this creates a little sticker that I can use. I really rub the die cut in there to get as much stickiness on the back as possible and then I'll peel off the backing and it, now my acrylic piece has some stickiness on the back. Is it 100% perfect and 100% clear? No, you can see, you know, sometimes you can see some like sticky residue, but it does work really well for smaller die cuts like these. This method is way less messier and less noticeable as opposed to say glue or something. This technique would also work great, say if you had a die cut that was covered with glitter, it helps seal it all in while still adding shine. It's a really easy and quick trick to get some shine to your die cuts. You've probably seen this technique before, but I thought I'd show you anyway, just as a reminder or to all the card making newbies out there. But you can heat emboss for added dimension and shine. After making your die cut, you just have to ink it up in some Versamark ink. If your die cut has a mind of its own, you can always attach it to some kind of handle. And by handle, I mean a scrap piece of cardstock. This will also help protect your fingers from getting burned. And then once it's inked with Versamark ink, you simply pour embossing powder over. You can use clear to keep the color of your die cut. You could use metallic, that's always a fun look. 
Once your heat tool is hot, bring it over to your die cut and start melting the embossing powder. I like to let my die cut cool off a little first just because I'm a klutz and I'm more than likely to burn myself if I rush things too quickly. From there you just repeat the steps and you can add as many coats as you like. I think two or three usually works the best for me. And I love how this technique really turns your die cut into its own embellishment, its own like acrylic embellishment. And while you have the heat tool out, you can always add masked dimension to your die cuts. Using some painter's tape, I'm going to mask off the top half of my die cut. That way I can just ink up the bottom portion of this die cut. I'm going to use my handy dandy handle again to help protect my fingers. I'll pour the heat embossing powder over my die cut. Then I'll bring a hot heat tool over to melt the embossing powder. I'll wait till that cools down just a tad and then I'll peel off the masking tape and it will reveal this really fun dipped metal look. It's a really great way of making people think that you spent more on your card than you did. <laughs> Speaking of tricking people, another great die cutting hack is to add dimension by illusion. You do this by way of a gel pen. You see this a lot when it comes to like colored images, but you can also use them on your word die cuts. Just use a gel pen and go around the curves of your die cut and it creates this faux bubble effect. At quick glance, it really does look like the word die cut is raised. Another way to add dimension to your die cuts is to put another die cut behind it. If your die cut doesn't have a shadow die or an outline die, you can simply cut it out again and then kind of offset it a little behind it and it'll create this nice shadow effect to your word die cut. Adding glitter to your die cuts can be a lot neater if you use stick it adhesive. What this material does is it adds adhesive to the back of your cardstock. So what I'm doing is I'm peeling off one side of the stick adhesive and placing it on the front of my cardstock because I want the glitter to stick to the front of my die cut. So I'll run this entire thing through my die cutting machine and now I have a die cut with stick it stickiness on the front of the die cut. That way I can peel off the backing and add the glitter over top. You still want to do this process over a coffee filter or a scratch piece of paper just to help contain all of this glitter. For this technique, I also recommend using a pair of tweezers for any delicate die cut. That way it minimizes all the glitter on your hand. Unless you want glitter on your hand. Because that's always fun. Hey honey, why is there glitter in the meatloaf? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I kid, of course. And what I did there was that I... Uh, really press the glitter down with my bone folder to push it in there to make it sure it sticks to the adhesive. Another way to add some fun to your die cuts is to color them. Break out the coloring tools and practice your shading, your blending, um, because I for one certainly need to do that. <laughs> this is also a great hack, say if you don't have the exact color of cardstock uh, on hand, you can sh simply pull out a marker or colored pencil and make it that color. <laughs> A good old favorite for adding some shiny dimension to your die cuts is to use glossy accents. This technique has been around forever. It's probably why it was invented in the first place. A good uh, trick for getting even, uh, t uh, even coverage is to just use the end of the nozzle to help spread the gooiness around. And um, definitely let this dry. Like, don't let anything touch it. Don't let anything get in its way because I've done it before and it's not fun. You don't want to start all over. You can also use like a needle or a toothpick to help spread the goo for evenness. And now on to ombre die cuts. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. The first is just simply uh, uh, inking your die cut in various colors and trying to use the ink pad to blend within each color. And that's uh, probably the quickest and simplest way to do the ombre technique, although it does take a little extra work to blend them if they blend. Another way would be to get this like big block stamp. It's just a mirror block stamp that I've used before. And you can actually ink up the stamp to ink up your die cut. And that might help you blend your ink colors a little more. Another way, which I don't show here, is to simply ink blend on paper and then die cut that once you're happy with how the colors have blended. 
You can use the masking technique from before if you wanted your ombre to have really sharp lines. If paper scraps keep getting stuck in your cutting plates, a trick I like to do is to use the other cutting plate and just simply scrape the rest off. No special tool required, I usually just scrape all of this directly into the trash. I learned this next die cutting tip from Jennifer McGuire. For more easy cleanup or stuck in die cut pieces, simply use a lint roller to help unstick all those pieces out of there and then clean up all those extra bits that you don't want on your surface area. If you're going to be doing a lot of die cutting with a lot of different dies, I recommend using some painter's tape or some, whatever tape you're using to make a web. I fit as many of my metal dies on my platform as I can and then I use the tape to connect them all together so I can pull off the web in one piece and this makes it a lot easier to just simply use the web and place it on another piece of cardstock to run it through your die cutting machine again. This technique also works great for alphabet dies. Once you have your alphabet dies lined up straight or as straight as possible, then you're going to put a piece of tape over it and now you have a nice solid piece or a solid web to work with to do uh, repeat die cutting if you need to. And I'm sure you guys already know this, but if it works in your situation, you can always save the negative pieces of your die cutting and make another card of it. Gotta love two for one crafts. Another way to save time doing your die cutting is to die cut all at once and then color when you can and then store them. Now the goal is not to build up a major stockpile of die cuts, but it's nice to have some on hand for in the future when you know there's a specific card you want to make and you can simply just pull out, pull them out to color them or pull them out and they're ready to use to add to your card. That does for me guys, let me know your die cutting hacks down in the comments and I might include them in a future video.